Good morning. Good morning. And I'm going to say my special thank you at the end so I don't do what I did last week. Um, welcome to Northport Community United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are always welcome here. Your leadership team, leadership team continues to monitor to the COVID information available and continues to follow CDC guidelines. At this time, we strongly recommend that everyone wear a mask, even if you are vaccinated. Unvaccinated persons must wear a mask. Reminders, deacons will meet Tuesday at 3 p.m. and women's breakfast will be Wednesday at 8.30 a.m. Did you notice our sign out front? Thank you to Mike Bork for working on repairs to the sign while he was at home recovering from surgery. And thank you to Mike, Tony Vance, <laughs> Doug Minnick, and Jim Maggart for finishing the work that needed to be done. The signs look great. Check them out and please be sure to say thank you to these guys. Today's flowers are given by Polly Perkins and Tom Hext in honor of our choir, bell ringers, and Dr. Wolf. Coming soon to our library, the Pilgrim's, Pilgrim's Promise by, Progress by John Bunyan. The UCC women are planning a rummage sale on March 18th, one day only, and it will be a limited sale. The only items that will be sold will be all types of clothing, shoes, hats, purses, etc bedding, towels, tablecloths, etc. They will be needing lots of help. They welcome men and women helpers to set up, price items, sell, and pick up. Sign-up sheets are on the bulletin board in Fellowship Hall. There will be a movie event this Saturday. The movie will be War Room. Please invite your family, friends, and neighbors to attend. Now we'll watch a brief clip from the movie. been a good enough father. I want to be a good enough father. Let's go, let's go! Don't quit! Don't quit! Hey, you know what? I thought your jump rope routine was really good. I just got a notification that you moved money from our savings into your checking account. Can we talk about this later? You must be the real estate agent. Well, it's so good to meet you. Let me show you the house. This is my favorite place in this house. I call it my war room. You wrote prayers for each area of your life. Prayer strategy. I sure could use some of that. Tony, you should go see your practice tomorrow. I'm out of town this week. When were you going to tell me? I just did. Tony! That was my favorite rep. I'm real good. I you I wish I lived at your house. Whenever my parents are together, I just fight. Dude, I can't get a pass from you. It'd be easier to baptize a cat. I just need you to blow off a little sink, okay? There's one thing we do well. It's fight. You do not want World War III to break out in your home. No, no, I don't. Just because you argue a lot doesn't mean that you fight well. You got to plead with God so that he can do what only he can do. Then you got to get out of the way and let him do it. You need to do your in prayer. Keep fighting the good fight. Keep letting your light shine. I've never seen anybody do what you did. It's time for you to take off the gloves and fight for your act. Keep fighting the good fight. Lord, we need an army of believers. Lord, call us to battle. Our monthly food drive for Salvation Army will be tomorrow from 10 a.m. to noon. See today's handouts for the list of items being requested this month. Join us Wednesday evening for Ash Wednesday service at 7 p.m. And Doug Minnick has an announcement. The men's breakfast was Thursday. It will be again Thursday uh, every week. We're going to do it. And a good time was had by all. I encourage uh, 
everyone to come out and, and visit with us and just have breakfast and we talk about other things besides the church. I just must warn you that don't sit near Maggart because he'll try and get you to buy his breakfast. <laughs> Thank you, Doug. And Margaret Cook has an announcement. Good morning. It's time to travel. So um, several of you have asked if we're going to do another bus trip. We are not this year. COVID is still kind of playing into that. But we are next year. We are going to be going to the Ark Encounter and Creation Museum in Kentucky. We are, the trip is planned for Sunday, April 16th through Saturday, April 22nd. It is the Sunday after Easter. Some of you may be going back north. Join us. Drive your car, park at the hotel, stay with us all week, enjoy our activities with us. We have a good time. And it's just fun and fellowship and seeing wonderful things. This ark is built to scale. If any of you have ever been there, I have, Randy and I have been there before. It's amazing. Uh, you can see it a mile away. The cost of the trip <clears throat> is $725 based on double occupancy. It includes the motor coach transportation, six nights lodging, including four consecutive nights in a Cincinnati area hotel. Uh, the 10 meals, the breakfasts are included at the hotel along with four dinners. Admission to the Ark Encounter, the Creation Museum, a riverboat sightseeing cruise along the Ohio River, uh, in admission to the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center. There's a uh, diamond dinner party and entertainment, a lot of fun things. So I will be handing out the pamphlets after church in the back. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do this. Um, I just want to thank everybody for your love and support um, with Ed's passing. And I just truly love you all. Let us be in worship. Good morning. Good morning. We're so glad that you have chosen to worship with us this morning. And uh, we have a lot prepared for you, including we have speakers from Meals on Wheels with us. Let's give them a hand right now. 
and uh, they just celebrated 50 years of ministry uh, in the city of Northport. Uh, that's remarkable. <laughs> And uh, we have several, I don't know if we have several drivers from our church, but we, I know we do have at least one, and that's Barbara Chamberlain. She's right there. <laughs> the scripture is Psalm 119, 105, as a guide for our service today. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Let us stand and sing together our opening hymn, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Northport Community United Church of Christ. Welcomely, well, uh, recently, we've just celebrated our 50th anniversary. We are now going forward to the next 50 years. The Long Range Planning Committee has been meeting each month since November to create a three, five, and 10 year vision for the continual growth and prosperity of our wonderful church here on Biscayne. Those involved have been Norma Beach, Holly Caruzzi, Anita and Paul Strong, Donna Swanson, ex officio member Pastor Attila, and myself. I want to give a very special thank you to all of you who did so much while I was out sick, and especially to Paul Strong's internet and organizational skills for everything he's created. Whenever a future meeting is announced, which just happens to be March 15th, Tuesday at 2 p.m., I encourage any of you to enjoy us and join us, as your insight is equally important to anyone who has already been there. What I'm going to discuss this morning is the ideas are your plan. The purpose of today's announcement is to let you know that next week on Friday, you'll receive an email link, which is a survey created with your ideas, compiled and presented to you from this committee. It can be returned via email. It's very important that if you do not receive it, that you check your junk mail, since it's going to be sent as a group and sometimes those are thrown in to your uh, junk mail thinking it's scam. If you do not have email access, hard copies are given out next Sunday, March 6th. It can be completed here after church or taken home. And then you will return it March 13th so we can collate it on our March 15th meeting. 
How did we come up with these survey items? They are the strengths of our church. You listed them on the Chalk Talks pre-pandemic, more than two years ago. You can preview those Chalk Talk items in the newsletter that you received this week. You also will get a copy um, at the hard copy or the hard uh, at the meeting next week or the after church meeting um, so you can look at them. We look forward to hearing from all of you our spiritual growth, our mission growth, and our physical growth will expand alongside North Ports. God has blessed our church for 50 years. Thank him every day. Beloved, God is with you. And with all of us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the faithful one, our God. Loving God, you create us and create us always anew. You set us free and set all people free. You walk with us into new life, life with all and for all. Though we are blind to your light and try to cover it over, still you shine in all people and you gather all people in your light. So, with all creation, we sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy one, God of power and love, all creation shimmers with your presence, amazing and beautiful. You save us. Blessed are they who come in your love, amazing and beautiful. You save us. Blessed are all who come in your name, and blessed is Jesus, your Christ. The light of his love awakened us to our loveliness. Those who feared that light in themselves and others tried to put out the light, they crucified Jesus. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, one in your love and one in our love for the world. May your light shine in us, the light of the risen Christ, the light of love. Amen. today to break it. Okay, you ready? Just break it in anywhere in the middle. Be okay. You ready? One, 
two, three. <laughs> there we go. Cool. Is that fairly easy? Yeah. Okay, got another one for you then. I only have two of these. These have 12 sticks in them. And it reminds us that there were 12 disciples that worked with Jesus, and then he sent us all out to be disciples. So, see if you can break that one. A little bit harder? A whole lot harder? Okay, if you can't do it, pass it down. Let somebody else try. That's pretty hard, isn't it? One stick wasn't too bad. Twelve of them? Yeah. I'm not even sure Mr. Minnick could break that. So. Pick on him, too. The Bible tells us that all of us are a team. You know what a team is? A team is people who work together, um, whether it be football or a long-range planning committee or even in worship. We work together as teams. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, it says the, that a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Well. I use sticks instead of cords because it's a little bit easier to work with. But it reminds us that working together is very, very important. Um, in Ecclesiastes, still in chapter 4, it says, Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If, any of, if one of them falls down, the other can help them get up. So not being alone is good, because when we're weak, the other one helps us be strong. And we do that at church, don't we? If somebody isn't doing well, we help them out. Even in families, we do that. So it's important to work together, to live in unity. Psalm 133 says, how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. So I have for you a piece of paper. Let's see, pass those along there. And give you one. And this reminds us that we all have different talents. We have different skills. God helps us with different things. Like Mrs. Campus. She's, she's not here today, but she, when she, she sings, and she sings really pretty. If I were to sing, that would not be a nice thing to do to you. <laughs> Different talents. But give me a hammer and some nails, I'm ready to go. So we all have different talents. So take this sheet home. And when you talk to your family about it, when you talk to your friends, talk about how when we work together as a family, it makes a difference, as a community, as a church, as people of God. Did you know that different churches can work together? Yeah, and things like uh, helping feed the hungry. It's not one church's job. It's part of what the family of faith does. We can work together. Even Methodists can work together. Yeah, I imagine that. <laughs> but we can also work together as a country. You know, you watch the news, sometimes it sounds like we don't do very well as a country working together. But we can. We can even do it as a world. Because like right now, things aren't very happy with parts of our world. But we can work together if we let God change our hearts to love instead of fear or be angry. So, remember to work together. Now, if you want to take the big bundle home, you can. Probably best to just put your little broken sticks right over there and not take those back to the pew because those are kind of sharp. You take them out one by one, but see, what that does is that means we're not working together then. 
And that's what we do far too often. We think, I'm going to do it myself and nobody's going to help me. I can do it better. And we get broken. So thanks for a good conclusion to this. Okay? <laughs> Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you that we can work together. Bound by your love. Guided by the Holy Spirit. So that we will know victory in your name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Go ahead and leave your little sticks there and I'll clean those up after church so Mike doesn't have to. And if there's anybody who wants a stick. Yeah, I know you do. Thank you. So uh, we have the great joy and honor to have from Meals of Wheels, uh, Gloria Majerus, she's the driver coordinator, and then Christy and uh, Scott Hedrick, um, as I know Christy is the client coordinator, I don't know what Scott does. He's the president. He's the president, oh. <laughs> well, you're a good president, so let's give him a hand. Meals on Wheels, we strive to live out the commandments started, stated by Jesus in the book of Mark, chapter 12, verses 29 through 31. He was asked by one of the teachers of the law, what is the most important commandment? He was trying to be trapped. He was trying to trick him. But Jesus said, the most important commandment is this, listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. <clears throat> the second is equally as important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. Northport Meals on Wheels has strived for 50 years to um, work under this pretense, under this um, mission. Um, they started 50 years ago in a small church, Trinity United Methodist Church, just down the street. It was in their kitchen where they served about 30 to 50 meals a week. But over time, we outgrew that kitchen. Gloria was there, I wasn't, I'm a newcomer. <laughs> but over time, God had blessed the ministry, and he provided. And so we were able to move into a new kitchen that is at Biscayne and 41 in the little strip mall there. You can see our big sign, Meals on Wheels. And we have a really large kitchen there, and now we're able to serve a lot more meals. 220 volunteers volunteers every week cook, package, and distribute meals to those in need. We work Monday through Saturday, including all holidays, Christmas, Labor Day. The only one we don't do is Easter because we don't work on Sundays because we go to church. <laughs> um, we want to care for these people daily with friendly visits and nutritious meals so that they can remain in their homes with dignity as long as possible. They don't have to go into a facility, but they can remain at home. So we're trying to feed them and love them. They are our neighbors. Some of our clients have chronic problems and they need our help for years. Others of them have, are only with us for a short time. They might have surgery 
or um, have just come out of the hospital because of a, a, a short illness, and they just need meals for a little while while they recover. So we take care of them as well. Many of our clients need more help than we can offer, but we are connected with Northport Social Services, and the leader of that organization is on our board, so we have access to her uh, really um, easily. And we also, when we send people to her, then she can connect them with other organizations that can help them and provide them more, more things than we can. If you are interested in joining us in this mission for the next 50 years, <laughs> we have three ways that you can get involved. You can use your time and talents, like he was talking about earlier, your gifts that God has given you to cook or to be a helper in the kitchen or to be a driver. Secondly, you can give of your financial resources. You can give to Meals on Wheels, and you can go to our website, and there's a link there for you to follow. And we have an organization right now, uh, the Flanzer Flanzer Trust. Trust, that is matching whatever you give up to $500 per month per family with a maximum of $3,000 a year. So they are helping us reach more and more people. And lastly, and really most importantly, you can pray for us. You can pray for our clients, you can pray for our drivers, you can pray for all of our volunteers, you can pray for the board as we seek God and we seek his direction for us moving forward and continuing to grow. And so I thank you very much for allowing me to say my part. You know, I look at this assembly and I say to myself, isn't it wonderful that you're here to praise God and worship as a community? But out there, there's needs, tremendous needs. And you know what? It's comfortable here, but sometimes it's not comfortable out there. We need people as drivers, not only to deliver food, but to connect with these people. Do you realize in some cases this was the only person they saw a day was the driver? We need people that are gonna to help to cook these meals. And I look at these women and a lot of these men here and I know you know how to cook. <laughs> and trust me, we can train you. Christy and I will train drivers, Scott and I will train cook helpers, and if you wanna be a cook, because you realize, look, I'm going to be 80, and don't you think it would be good that I see someone else stepping up to the plate? Don't you all want that? That's the story of Christianity. When one does, another one steps up and keeps stepping up. The Lord's work can only be done if it's done in us. So I ask you today, stop over afterwards and see us. And I had an Irish mom that used to say, Gloria, if you want to be happy, make others happy. Well, guess what? Let's starting. Let's make other people happy. And let's touch them through delivering food, touching their, their loneliness, preparing it, or praying for us and giving to us. I thank you. And we'll be over there after the service, so Talk to us. And also, too, if you know someone that needs a meal, you talk to this lady. We, we will help, but you got to help us. Remember, if you want to be happy, make others happy. Thank you. Would you like to say something? <laughs> I'll, I'll speak later. Okay. You speak Anybody later. Come talk to me, you'll be glad to. Okay, very good, very good. Let's give him a hand one more time for 50 years of ministry and helping people. That was a blessing to hear. 
And uh, yes, we certainly will pray uh, for all your volunteers, the board, and the recipients of this ministry, that they will be uh, blessed uh, continuously. And thank you for uh, doing this important work right here in our own city of Northport. So celebrations and concerns, uh, we are going to start out with the celebrations. Uh, we have um, birthdays today. Marge Bates and Bill Wulo are celebrating their birthday. As Bill here, right there. Happy birthday, Bill. Yeah. And then we have uh, tomorrow, Sally Rutledge, Tony Vance, Terry McDowell, and Mike Barrow. So I'm looking at Sally, is she here? All right, happy birthday, Sally. And I don't see Tony Vance, uh, but uh, if he's watching us from home, then happy birthday to Tony and happy birthday to Terry and Mike Barrow. And then uh, tomorrow would have been Lois Harris's birthday. And we are going to um, just say uh, more about that in just a moment. On Thursday is Rose Jess's birthday. Is Rose here? What's that? I thought I saw her. Yeah. Happy birthday, Rose. So to all of you that are celebrating birthdays, we pray that your day is filled with joy and peace, and we give thanks to God for all that you bring to our lives. Um, happy birthday. So, um, and then uh, concerns. Um, we are going to uh, have all the concerns, uh, the names um, show up on the screen, and you, right where you're seated, can uplift each individual in prayer. I've heard somebody say that what they do is they write down the names, and then they can either reach out to these individuals during the week, or they don't forget the names and continue to pray. Um, so we do that. Um, uh, we heard already that Kim and Brent Campus are not here today, and that is because Brent's parents were in a car accident on Thursday, and um, Brent's mom is okay, um, considering the circumstances, but Brent's dad is at the trauma unit at the hospital in Ocala. And um, so we encourage them to stay and uh, obviously to, reach, uh, to minister to their own family. So uh, Brent and Kim, if you are watching us, uh, we are praying for you. But before those names show up and we pray for them right where we are seated, I have the very sad news for us that Lois Harris passed away um, following her surgery. And uh, we have um, Angie and John with us. Um, where are they? Right back there. So I'm going to walk up to you and we're going to reach out to you and pray to, you, pray, uh, to God for you during this time. When I walk down the aisle here, uh, right there, I think it's the maybe third or fourth row where she always used to sit. And when your mom wasn't here, we would have people that watch us from either out of state or uh, in a different city, and they would say, where is Lois's walker? Uh, we always knew when she wasn't here. Uh, and uh, when I think about your mom, I have to tell you that the words that come to my mind is joy, laughter, her singing, and um, she just was the easiest person to sit down next to and talk. Angie and John, we're so saddened by this news. And please know uh, we're praying for you. Even once you're no longer physically with us, we will uplift you in prayer. So let's all reach out to Angie and John in their time of loss. Heavenly Father, you said in your word that if we draw near to you, you will draw near to us. You are close to those that are brokenhearted and crushed in spirit. And we pray for Angie especially here, and John, and everyone in the family, in other parts of the United States, um, here in this city, and um, even as far as Australia, Lord, that you would just comfort them and be their best friend and companion in their loss. And we thank you for Lois's life, the joy and the laughter that she brought to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And I also know that uh, uh, Ed Boger's sister, Becky, is here. I see her. Is there anybody else from the family? 
Um, Becky, when are you traveling back to Ohio? We will be leaving tomorrow morning. We will be back in Ohio Tuesday. Okay, well, have a safe journey. And uh, again, uh, our heart goes out to you, Patty and Becky, and everyone in your family. God bless you and comfort you during this time. Um, so as the uh, names come up on the screen, let's pray for those needs, and I will lead us in prayer. Let's bow our heads and uh, pray. Lord, we know that uh, you ear, your ears, they do hear, your eyes do see, and your arm is not shortened. Um, we know that you love us. We know that um, you hate uh, what illness is doing to your loved ones, to the children that you love, the children that you died for. We know from the cross, it calls out to each and every one of us, by my stripes you are healed. So we ask you in the name of Jesus that you would heal any disease, that you would have compassion and bring healing from all sickness and bring comfort, deep comfort, true comfort to every grieving heart. In the name of Jesus, we pray these things. Amen. Um, let's stand for a moment and greet one another. We have a tradition. Um, well, no, we're not going to do that yet. Let's do the offering first. <laughs> about the tradition later.
All right, so let's take a moment and stand and put your hand on your heart and look at someone and say, I'm so glad you're here and I'm praying for you. We used to hug one another, but right now this is what we're doing. like to hear what the Word of God has to say this morning. We're going to look at Mark chapter 9 verses 2 through 13 and I appreciate it in the testimony um, by Meals on Wheels about referring to the heart of your mission and um, how it is indeed true that it can be comfortable in here. We know that. We are in our Sunday best um, but we know that the reality of life looks very differently. Uh, We're seeing that right now with um, uh, people's lives being in danger in the Ukraine. I just spoke with um, family overseas and they said the news had a report on there saying that uh, women and children are leaving the cities uh, to be in safety. The men are staying behind. And do you know who else is staying behind who doesn't have enough money to go anywhere? And um, we need to truly be praying for um, this to be over soon. Um, and lives would be spared and not lost. Heavenly Father, we do pray for that situation in the Ukraine and war and everything that's going on in our world. Um, And yes, um, the world out there is not comfortable, but we thank you that the moments that we're spending here today looking into your word are to prepare us uh, for the mission out there. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter and Jacob and John and led them up, uh, James and John, and led them up uh, on a high mountain alone by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His garments uh, became shiny, extremely white as snow, such as no launderer on earth could uh, whiten them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. Peter answered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three sanctuaries, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to say because they were very afraid. Then a cloud overshadowed them and a voice came out of that cloud saying, this is my beloved son, listen to him. Suddenly they looked around, no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus only. As they came down the mountain, he warned them to tell no one what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. They kept that statement to themselves, questioning each other um, what the rising from the dead meant. And they asked him, why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? He answered, Elijah indeed comes first to restore all things. Yet how is it written of the Son of Man that he would suffer many things and be treated with contempt. But I say to you that Elijah has indeed come, and they have done to him whatever they wished, as it is written of him. So far, God's eternal word. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would um, just fill the words that are written on paper uh, with the power of the Holy Spirit to be transformed in our own hearts, that we would be receptive and be able to understand your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray these things. Amen. Yeah, that's a prayer that we all have. Lord, work within us. I think you already referred to that earlier, that the work has to happen uh, in us first before we can do the work outside these doors. The Word of God is steadfast. Um, It remains uninterrupted in its power from generation to generation. We've heard the word, uh, the number 50, a couple of times. Uh, Your 50th anniversary, our church's 50th anniversary. And, um, you know, it's marvelous to see that the Word of God does not change from generation to generation. 
And the purpose of the Word of God is to create life in us, and beyond that, it is to lead us to Jesus. And so when we look at this original, the original text here of the Mount of Transfiguration, it really allows us the translation of to see God's glory in clarity, to recognize who Jesus truly is. And Jesus even asked the disciples, he said, you know, who do you say that I am? And the disciples would say, well, some say this, some say that. And Jesus is looking at uh, the disciples and he is questioning them. So Jesus is taking the inner circle of disciples with him, Peter, James, and John. Um, and Jesus is changed right before their eyes. He's transformed. We all know, and we heard it in the children's message today, that Jesus had 12 disciples. But it seems, interestingly enough, that he does not take all 12, but only three of them, Peter, James, and John. And he's taking them because they will play um, a role in the future of the church that requires a one-on-one -on -one counseling session, so to speak, a time of preparation. It's a preparatory event for them. Peter, we know as the rock, right? John and all his writings that have been passed on to us. And James, another pillar of the early church. And they are going up on this mountain so that Jesus would set up a foundation of faith in them that would then prepare them for the work ahead. I mean, I'm trying to think about um, what it would have been like. You already mentioned that your ministry started out uh, in a church, at Trinity Methodist Church, and um, in the kitchen there. And I wonder about all the people, and you were part of it, uh, Gloria, um, that uh, how much preparation must have gone into all of that. Meetings and planning and praying and uh, preparing for the actual outreach mountain. That's the, uh, you know, when you go up on the mountain, when you go separately, as you go to a, to a retreat and you prepare yourself for what God is doing, right? And so the mountain in the Old Testament is often the place where God revealed his might and his power and himself to the people. But there's also another expression in the Old Testament. It's called, and this is probably very familiar to some of us, it's called the high places. Isn't that interesting? That it's not calling it the high mountain, but the high places. And it was in the high places where the people were seeking the false gods, where they were worshiping idols. And Moses, for example, in the Old Testament, we know that on Mount Sinai, he received the Ten Commandments. Elijah is one prophet um, on the Mount Carmel, he proves that the God of Israel is the real God. And there are 400 Baal prophets who, no matter how hard they try, they cannot get their idol to do anything for them. And Elijah goes from a mountain peak experience with God to flee from evil Queen Jezebel to Mount Sinai. And it is here that he sees the glory of God. And we're going to return to that in a little bit later, um, what that actually meant and what Moses and what Elijah prayed. But here on this Mount of Transfiguration, we can see that this greater revelation of God's glory is so mighty and so powerful. There's always more. There's more glory and more power and more um, majesty to our king than we know of him. And we can see that in this story. There, he is brighter and more powerful than we know. In this story, it happens to be three men, um, but we don't want to be partial to the men. We also have to mention the women. All the women say amen. Amen. Yes, the women have to be mentioned too because here it happens to be three men, but later on at the day of resurrection it's the three women, right, who initially see what has happened at the empty grave and we are entering into Lent and Lent is a, is a somber, it's a, it's a reflective time, it's a time of looking inward about everything that Jesus has done uh, for us. Now those of you who attend our Tuesday Bible study which uh, Lois was always the first one to come. I always had to open the door up front, um, to have it ajar, so that if I was in my office or the staff was up front in the office, that she could just walk in. 
And she was always here, probably about a good half hour before the Bible study started. Wonderful memories. And I hardly can believe that I'm saying this. But in this Tuesday Bible study, and she would be a witness to that, we said that in the Gospel of Mark, uh, we um, see how, and we are in the Gospel of Mark this morning, how Mark loves an expression, loves to use the word immediately. Do you remember that? Immediately. And when we look at the account of the Gospel writer of Mark, we will see Jesus always on the go, always busy, always doing something. But it says, it said in this scripture that after six days, we don't exactly know what happened in those six days, but after six days, they go up on this mountain. And there is a similar passage of that in Exodus 24. I'm going to read it to you and you can follow along. Then Moses went up on the mountain and uh, the cloud covered the mountain. And the glory of the Lord settled down on Mount Sinai. And the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, the Lord called to Moses from inside the cloud. Don't you just want to know what those six days were all about? What happened to Moses in those six days? But whatever it was, it was a time of preparation, I believe, so that he could hear when God actually talked to him. And here in the story, the same thing happens. God speaks. A time after a time of preparation. It's a glorious event. It's marvelous. And they see Jesus like they had never seen him before. He's transformed before their eyes. And that's what faith will do. Faith will, tra faith will transform what we know about God and will all of a sudden show us things that we did not know about him before. And they wanted to stay there, we know that, from what Peter said, but they couldn't. They had to go down into the valley where the people are. And, you know, I um, think about uh, what is happening here. It says that um, this is a preview, so to speak, uh, to Jesus' coronation. I think the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth II, she is turning... Um, she's having 70 years of being on the throne. That was the first televised event on such a massive scale to declare to back then still somewhat of an empire that you have a queen. And did you know that that coronation ceremony of Queen Elizabeth II was as much a ceremony as it was a religious worship service? Everything in that ceremony points towards God. It points towards how God is going to use this monarch to lead her people in the right way. And this transfiguration of Jesus is about uh, God pointing at Jesus and saying, look to him. And Jesus, the way how he was going to get to his coronation day, was on the way of suffering. That's why we're going through the season of Lent. In Mark 9, 9, it says, As they went back down the mountain, he told them not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. You know, not everything that we find out or hear or learn about God needs to be shared with everyone right away. There is the right time and the right season. You know, um, I'm sure Pastor could um, uh, testify to that, or anybody who is called into the, into, into the mission of God or has a call of God on their lives. You don't go running around right away and telling your neighbors and everyone in the family, oh, God has called me into the ministry takes time. I didn't even tear, dare tell my parents right away. You know why? Because they had different plans for me. And so did I. But when God calls you into ministry, there's a time where that has to ferment and you have to wait. So the glory of Jesus, this preparation for, um, you know, Jesus getting uh, to his coronation day, um, he had to go through suffering first. Jesus was fully God. He was totally God, but he was also fully human, except for sin. Jesus had to be prepared for that, 
for the pain and also for the disappointment that his followers would be causing him. I know we've all been disappointed here in life, maybe sometimes by our closest friends. Jesus is our greatest example of how to handle disappointment in friendships. Because he loved the disciples anyway, didn't he? And I think there is something here that we could almost miss. This transfiguration of Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration was just as important to Peter, James, and John as it was to Jesus. Look at verse 7. And a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud and said, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. That's a word of affirmation towards Jesus, isn't it? Jesus needed to hear those words before he himself went on that road of suffering towards Calvary. And yes, heroes with clay feet. Who are these heroes with clay feet? Well, all the disciples are, and we are looking at them as heroes today. Moses had clay feet, and so did Elijah. And in the eyes of the disciples, I was trying to figure this out, if they saw, when they saw Jesus with Elijah and Moses on the Mount of Transfiguration, they weren't just amazed and totally blown away by the transformation of Jesus, friends, but they, when they saw Moses and Elijah, they probably stood there with their mouths open and thought, wow. These were heroes of their faith. And now they see them. But I want to read to you from Exodus chapter 33. And I'm just getting started, so settle in. (laughs) Ah. Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, bring up these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. So basically Moses is looking at what? Uh, Maybe a million and a half people that he needs to lead and be there for them. And he's saying to God, you said to me I should do this, but you sure haven't shown me how. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray, if I have found favor in your sight, show me now your way, that I may know you, and that I may find favor in your sight. Consider uh, Consider too that this nation is your people. And he said, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And I'm not going to read the entire passage, but basically what God is saying to him, as an answer, you have asked for my help, and I'm going to give it to you. And he's saying the same to you. He's saying the same to you, my friend. If you turn to God, and you look to him and say, Lord, I need your help, he will go with you. He will be by your side. So Moses was cast down. It was a tremendous task. He knew his weaknesses, and he knew the weaknesses of the people. And then there's Elijah. After that triumph on Mount Carmel, he's running from uh, Queen Jezebel. He's downcast. He has a spiritual depression, so to speak, and he is getting so deep down into the dumps that he even wants to die. And this passage in the New Testament, and I've never seen it like this, is a delayed answer to prayer. Because both prayed. Elijah prayed and Moses prayed and said, Lord, I want to see your glory. And God answered it on Mount Carmel, and he answered it um, uh, for, for Moses, and he answered it for Elijah back then, because he showed his glory to them, and he promised his presence But little did those two know back then in the Old Testament that one day in the New Testament they would see the glorification of Jesus as anointed one, the Messiah, on the Mount of Transfiguration. I'm asking you today, are you having delayed answers to prayer in your life? Never underestimate what God is doing behind the scenes. And the promise to them, to James and John and Peter, was listen to him. And I'm finishing my message today um, with this assurance that Jesus was loved by the Father. Jesus loved the Father. And then the Father sent the Holy Spirit to live on the inside of you so that you knew which way to go in this journey that we are on in life. 
And in John 15, 9, we read, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. I heard about this father who, um, uh, him and his wife, they had a child with Down syndrome. And um, the child was developing, of course, slowly. And uh, the father had this worry. He said, oh, if I could just see my son smile, that would make me so happy. If my son would look at me and he would smile at me. But the son wouldn't for the longest time. He was delayed in development and all of that. But that was the father's prayer that I want to see my son smile. And the day came when the son started smiling. A joy-filled smile. And after that, after that prayer, the son never smiled as much at anybody like he did at his father. A wonderful answer to prayer, isn't it? It was simple, simple enough. Have my son smile at me. Do you remember when your children smiled at you for the first time? Everything on the inside went down, yes! And you smiled back. A delayed answer to prayer, but God did answer it. And I don't know what you are praying for today, but I know that God knows your heart and he hears every word that you pray. And he wants to be there for you. Show me your glory. I will go with you all the way, God says. Let us stand and pray. Heavenly Father, you see your children here today. You see their joys and you see their pains. You see maybe the many delayed answers to prayer. But the hour and the day is coming uh, when you will answer in your way. We look to you, Lord, and we ask you, show us your glory. And we pray for your protection and your blessing upon each and every one of us. Amen. All right. Um, And now the benediction and the peace of God that transcends all understanding, will keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. We're going to sing the Lord's Prayer together. Great Sunday afternoon.